Right, I, I'd like to thank everyone for joining here today. My name is Kevin McDermott, and I'd like to kick off this webinar. So the title of today's webinar is RISC V Custom Instructions, Design, Development and Deployment. And this is presented and co-hosted with Andy's Technology and Imperis Software. The agenda today will be a presentation from Hubert Chung from Andy's Technology, followed by Kat Shi from Imperis Software. And then we'll get everyone together for a Q&A session. And uh, please submit your questions through the text uh, box. We'll be looking at those during the, the presentations and we can answer those in the Q&A session. And then please stick around for the end of the webinar because uh, Jonah at Andy's will be uh, presenting a raffle prize. So look forward to seeing that. So I'd like to kick things off and turn over to Hubert, if um, I can transfer over to you now. Thank you everybody. And uh, welcome to Andy's in Paris webinar. I'm Hubert Chang. Today, I'm going to cover how Andy's help create domain specific acceleration using Andy's custom extension. And this is the founding platinum, platinum member of RISC-V Foundation and also major contributor to RISC-V. We are the chairs for several task groups and contribute to many areas of RISC-V ecosystem. We have more than 1 billion annual run rate and over 1.5 billion this year. And we also have about 300 customers around the world as a 15 years leading CPU IP vendor. We have a lot of experience in this field and right now focusing on our V5 core based on the RISC-V architecture. Our members also came from many well-known IC companies such as AMD, DAC, Intel, MIPS, NVIDIA, Sun, and so on. Here is an overview of how NDS and Imperis can work together to enable fast development of your domain-specific accelerator. You can see, you can create a enable processor and using these models within Imperis virtual platform. NDS provides comprehended products to support our customers. From the top, we have NDSTAR, which now is a V5 architecture based on RISC-V ISA. On the left top, we have NDSCore, which is our high optimized CPU cores, and NDSHIP is our FPGA platform that can help our customer to evaluate and validate their SOC design. On the right hand side, and this side is our IDE tool for designer can easily build their application on our CPU. The next one, and this soft, is our BSP for provides many different software stacks. Let's look at Evolution of computing acceleration. There are four major methods. First is acceleration engine like crypto engines. The next one is the big coprocessor like GPU or FPU. The third one is standard ISA expansion such as RISC-V, MPV extension, and so on. And the last one is our extension like Justify Open ISA that allows designer to create customized processors. We will present the first case for you. As a, use, as a user, you can create custom instructions, custom port, and custom memories. And 
ACE stands for and is custom extension. When designers are using the ACE, the ACE script includes the general information of custom instructions, such as the name of a brand and custom resources. See semantics for the behavior of custom operation and other information of custom instructions. The concise Verilog only includes the custom logic provided by ACE designer without worrying about the other interfaces signals and control logic related to CPU pipeline. With these files, our EDA level tool compiler can generate the extended RTL, extended instruction set simulator, and extended tools like com uh, compiler and disassembler and debugger. Uh, one more part is the automatically generated uh, comparison environment. That uses uh, that the compiler can compare the result of the C C C model and the RTL code. It provides many features for designer to design custom instructions that can meet their specific requirement. As it supports scatter instruction, vector instructions. It also supports background option that can execute the custom instruction parallel from the other instructions. For the operand that are used by defining the instruction, also support custom register, custom memory, and custom ports beside from standard operands. The implied option can also imply operand don't appear in the manic to reduce encoding space for custom instructions. Finally, based on custom defined information, S can automatically complete task of upcode assignment, generating extended components uh, such as tools and simulators. Compiler can generate RTL code for instruction decoding, operand mapping, dependence checking, input access, output update. S designer can enable logic sharing to save some gate counts and auto generated waveform control file to jumpstart the simulation based on their needs. Now you have known the ICE features, the ACE features. Let's take a look at the flow of ACE development. If designer already known their software critical functions, they can skip the first step and start to define the custom instruction. Otherwise, designer can profile the application software and find out the time critical calls. When the next step is, uh, then the next step is to define the ACE instruction to replace the, the course and profile again to modify the applications to accurate evaluate performance to see if it can meet the cycles. If not, then repeat the same steps until the cycle met. Otherwise, we are ready to move to the next step to implement the ACE RTL and evaluate performance power area. Again, if PPA requirements are not met, check the RTL and find a room to improve and repeat the steps of RTL design. If not, designer need to go back to the software profiling and go to and continue the flow from the profiling application software 
until all the requirements are met. In this way, you can customize your CPU for the system level. I will leave it to in Paris. This is a high level view of the CPU pipeline and how it interacts with its pipeline. You can see that we are creating a semi independent pipeline to a separate algorithm you care about. And this will do the heavy lifting of managing all interaction with pipeline and has us in orange and purple. You just worry about user logic in red. For speed up, S can easily speed up the performance because you can use one instruction to complete a complicated operation that usually takes a lot of cycles. The same idea also applies to power consumption without S. An instruction is to go through fetch, decode, retire, plus execution stage for n times. However, with one S instruction, you are not only combine and batches decode, retire into one time, but also can build a more efficient logic when execute the S instruction. There are a few examples showing how much improvement S can enhance your design in terms of performance power and power. You can see with Andy's core with S instruction, the more complicated application, the more you can get higher speed up and power efficiency. We also provide system C environment, which is support TLM 2.0 for designers to prototype their system. We provide the system and CPU model library that includes the baseline CPU, GDB server, local memory, interface, and so on. And these modules can also integrate with other SOC component. Our tool can integrate the ACE into our system, C model library. And if the designer have ACM that needs to connect to some SS interface, as well have this interface in library. We can do more just uh, we can do more than just create a new instructions. S has the capability to add dedicated memory and buses to accelerate data movement and optimize storage by using ACM and the ACP. ACM means and this custom memory and ACP means and this custom port. In Paris, we will shortly, uh, we'll shortly show you how you can extend our CPU core simulation to system level simulation. Here are how we, uh, here uh, we will show an example of how to use this custom port. Let's say designer want to use CPU to directly talk to external hardware engine through the handshaking protocol. Here, the CPU will prepare command through the ACR, then send the command to hardware engine and wait for the hardware engine ready to send the result back to CPU. So in the S script, the designer can define custom port to 90, 90 bits, 90 bits command, they connect to four hardware engines and for one bit input ready signal to connect to each hardware engine and for 256 bit ports to take the result back from the hardware engine.
you can also connect to a coprocessor via a custom port. Let's see four different types of application here. Uh, type one use command valid, command ready for handshaking. It will send a, a VRIW uh, command with 256 bit width. Actually, you can arbitrarily uh, Y as you like. Uh, for type two, after handshaking, it will load data from processor. And for type three, after handshaking, it will store data to coprocessor. For type 4, it will read the status of coprocessor. In this way, you can have a good uh, communication uh, with coprocessor outside the CPU. By using ACE, designers uh, only need needs to focus on the semantics of custom instruction. All the housekeeping works related to CPU pipeline have been taken care of by compiler, such as opcode assignment, decoding, operand mapping, pipeline control logic, uh, dependency checking for GPR, as also have a comprehensive support of many types of operand and instructions. and verification environments as well. With ACE, designer can easily turn the high, highly optimized extended double and this specified core to become domain-specific accelerator. This is how easily you can create customized accelerator processor. Yes, now Impress will tell you uh, how you can start to develop system software on their virtual platform. Great, thank you, Hubert. That was a very good uh, overview. I'd like to just transfer things over now to uh, Kat Shi from Empiris, who will pick up the next uh, agenda. Welcome, everyone. I'm Kat Shi from Empiris. Today, I will discuss three topics. First is background on Imperis, and second, custom instructions in the Imperis workflow. And third, I will share a couple of customer success stories doing firmware and software development on Imperis. Imperis is the leader in virtual platforms. We develop advanced simulators, modeling technology, models, and tools. We are headquartered in UK. We also run this website called ovpworld.org. This is where our users go download evaluations and our open source models. Our key customer segments include AI, AR, VR, automotive, IoT, industrial, semiconductors. And the technologies I'm going to discuss today have been proven by many customers including joint customers with Andes. What is a virtual platform? It's an instruction accurate processor model of hardware resources. It presents a programmer view model that runs same binary files as the actual hardware. The debug and analysis tools offer very unique access to all the cores and peripherals. On the right-hand right side, I want to illustrate the scalability of our virtual platform. It ranges from a single core CPU to a multi-core homogeneous SOC to a heterogeneous core and a variation of any of these, plus, for example, an accelerator, and even multiple SOCs. Are we up for a quiz? Let's spend a few seconds on this. Here are the answers. Our customers benefit hugely from this schedule shift left 
point. That means the reduction in their product schedule. Our customers use us for many use cases, including architectural exploration, firmware software development, sharing with team and partners before the hardware is ready, incorporating us into the agile development process. Our models are open source. They're not proprietary. Thanks for taking the quiz. So continuing on, another concept is what we call EPK, Extendable Platform Kits. It's a fixed virtual platform plus running software. On the right-hand side, here's an example of an Andes EPK. It shows an Andes single core N25 running free RTOS with a quad core, quad, quad core AP that boots SMP Linux. Linux prompt usually comes up in less than 10 seconds on Imperis. An EPK is a great way to share with your software team so that they can start with their part of the project early on. There are three key technologies and differentiators I want to highlight. First, Imperis has the fastest processor models in the industry. We also have a really wide selection. Today, we have 275 processor models that supports 15 ISAs. For RISC V, we deliver what we call en envelope models. That means a generic model, and we support all the ratified extensions and, of course, the base extension in RISC V. We have very high quality simulator. We've taken a lot of time over the years to tune it for quality and accuracy. The third is our tools. We provide multiprocessor debugger and also what we call VAP tools, verification analysis profiling tools. On the right hand side, this block diagram shows that we have the DP in the middle with, with the CPU models. We also supply a huge libraries of peripherals, bus models, memory models. The VP talks to the simulator through API. And on the right hand side is our top of the line tools for the end users. Now I'm going to talk about our custom instruction design flow. This slide might look familiar. Hubert just talked about that. This is the ACE development flow, the Endis flow. Our flow is very similar to this. Our customer would use us from the functional level optimization. As Hubert talked about, we come in at the system level so you can optimize from the top down. This is what our flow looks like. Underpinning the flow chart is the instru instruction accurate simulation plus timing model. And as I already mentioned, the platform underneath can be a small CPU up to the system level. So the flow goes like this. You can use one of our RISC-V envelope models, run actual workload on it, run your software application to identify bottlenecks, run our, use our tools to do, to do function and timing trace. So now you've got a baseline. The next step is to add or edit the custom instructions. It's very easy to add the custom instruction in our models. We actually handle that in a side file, so it doesn't affect the core model. Run the same simulation tracing again. Observe the results. Have you met your design goals? If not, go back to iterate, change up the custom instructions. If yes, then congratulations. You got yourself a new risc -V model.
Now that we have the new RISC V model, there are a lot of uh, downstream cases that can leverage this model. I'm just going to point out a few of them. You can encapsulate that into system Verilog test bench. You can use it for a front end as a front end to emulation systems. That really cuts down a lot of um, overhead to get to the emulation part. For example, to get to a Linux prompt, it takes about 700 million uh, instructions to get to the Linux prompt. So using a virtual model would really shortcut that process. You are, uh, if you're a system C house, use us for system C simulation. A very popular use case is to use our model for OS and drivers porting and bring up. I'm going to expand into this use case, which is early firmware software development. Now, just to recap from the earlier discussion, the advantages of using a virtual platform are quite plenty. Um, in the use case of software development, that includes having full controllability visibility of the platform from both external port and internal nodes point of view. It makes it very easy to observe errors and do test and do testing of corner cases. The testing are deterministic. And also on this right hand side, we point out that it's very easy to include virtual platforms into your agile development process. So this picture shows for BPs running on your server farm, running uh, CI, continuous integrations. Now I'll share a couple of real life examples. The first example is on firmware development. This was an ARM-based platform. So the goal was to use this virtual platform to bring up the OS and also to test the AMP OS uh, configuration. AMP is asymmetrical multiprocessing. So the OS was brought up in, uh, throughout multiple phases. Once the OS was brought up, another step was to test the memory access because of the AMP configurations. AMP consists of several cores and they would have to share the same memory, physical memory. So, but then each core has its own memory space. So a very short memory access monitor program in C was written and it would flag access rules violations during the simulation. So let's take a look at the left-hand side. This illustrates that for each core on this uh, multi-core system, the memory region that it should have access to. So these are the memory access rules. As the simulation was running, any violations would be printed out. And the warnings would look something like this yellow section here. As you can see, both the physical address and virtual memory address were printed out. It makes it very easy to troubleshoot problems. In this situation, low level boot code problems were identified and that was also fixed early on in this project. The next example is, of, uh, is about OS Bring Up. This is a project we did with our customer ESOL in Japan. ESOL is the largest real-time software <laughs> developer in Japan. And the goal of the project was to bring up an AutoSAR stack on top of a dual core uh, ECU, actually two of them. Here on this uh, lower right hand side, it shows a diagram of two virtual ECUs. Each ECU is built on top of a dual core processor. And these two ECUs were connected through what we call a pseudo canvas. 
it was really using the UART to do a serial link communication. We did that because the purpose of the test was not to test the protocol of the CAN bus, but really just to test the communications. As you can see, minimal peripherals were built into this virtual platform, just enough to bring up the OS. So on this top part, it shows the configuration of the test. Test stimuli was pumped into the, virtu the first virtual ECU and test checking was done on the second one. So the goal of the test was to check the communications content to make sure that it's high reliability. The multi-core RTOS was brought up in a week. The virtual platform was also able to catch bugs early on in the test cycle. Visibility of the virtual platform enabled debug, enable the debug of secure elements of the software stack. That was a very successful project and moving on to the second phase of the project. Our customer also leveraged our tools to add code coverage and fault injection. You're waiting for a second quiz, right? Let's take another few seconds. Yes, so the first one is true. You cite accurate simulators such as any simulators for pipeline design and detailed timing. Architectural analysis is best done with Excel, yes, but only if your design is simple. In today's complexity, please contact Imperis for architectural analysis. Yes, and Imperis can model a complete multi-core heterogeneous system including peripherals. Software team loves waiting for hardware. I'm gonna vote no on that one. That completes my part of the presentation. Thank you, everybody. If you're thinking of RISC-V, please contact in Paris and Andes. Please come to ovpworld.org to download an evaluation. For more information, check out our website and contact the speakers, myself and Hubert. Thank you very much. And I'll hand it back to Kevin. Great, thank you, Kat. That went uh, very well. So just a reminder to everybody out there, please uh, go ahead and type in any questions in the Q&A uh, panel at the bottom of the screen. And just to kick things off, we do have a couple of questions that were submitted during the registration process. And uh, just a reminder at the end of the uh, Q&A session, um, our co-host uh, uh, Jonah, from Andes will uh, join us with a surprise raffle uh, with a free prize. So worth sticking uh, to the end here. So first of all, I just want to go back and ask a couple of questions. Uh, perhaps um, uh, start with you here, Kat, is um, what is the solution for a low cost uh, prototyping support? Yes, we love that question. There are several ways that Imperis is helping with that. Uh, please come to ovpworld.org. That's where you can definitely download a um, OVP SIM, which is our evaluation for non-commercial use, our simulator. And second way, if, it's your, if you're a student, we also have a university program to support that. And the third is uh, contact us. We have a wide range of uh, simulators that we love to provide our commercial tools for you to help you with your project. Great, thank you, Kat, uh, for kicking it off. And now I'd like to ask Andy's, um, just to recap on the tool chain support with uh, custom extensions for the software side. Yeah, so um, the, the software effort is very minimal. Uh, basically, as you saw from both the Andy's and Imperis development flow, um, you, you would start off with the Gordon software model targeting standard processors. 
and creating custom instructions is actually almost like replacing a function or subroutine um, with a um, inline assembly or one line of uh, custom instruction. So the um, what you what we generate out of our tool is a header file that defines an intrinsic mapping that custom instructions to um, that specific function. And rest of it is uh, uh, basically find and replace format where you place your, the function with a custom instruction intrinsic. So that there's really no change in uh, compiler or assembler and software tools at all. On our side, our tools all work magically. So even with custom instruction, all our tools, the multiprocessor debugger, the VAP tools, they all work the same. Okay, and then the follow on question that this person had was the um, using RISC-V with custom extensions in an application requiring functional safety, uh, industrial projects with RISC-V. Um, any comment on functional safety requirements? Yeah, so functional safety requirement actually starts from um, the definition all the way to full verification and certification. Um, so the uh, the CPU that there's some processor IP that's been designed from start with the correct documentation for functional safety. Your custom instructions, however, will need to for you to define those. Um, but the process is fairly straightforward, um, and uh, the, many of our customers have gone through the process. I'll add some as well. So on the Impera side, we do have safety critical customers. For example, I just mentioned automotive. We have several automotive motive customers. So in the area of functional safety, it's quite crit critical to do fault injection and co-coverage. And we see that as very helpful for customers to re meet uh, regulations compliance. Um, in fact, if you contact me, I can point you to a paper that we did last year with EU uh, 2020 vision program that outlines a, a project that we did on a mixed criticality system. Okay, um, let's see, this, this one might be more along Andy's lines is, um, what are the pipeline in implications when adding custom instructions? The, um, the custom instructions actually exist outside the processor pipeline um, in a well-defined block so that um, uh, any interaction with the processor is well-defined it's automatically generated, all the interlocks. Um, however, if something, um, the, if you don't do not want to disclose your custom instructions, the processor itself will run and behave as if it was a, just, it did not have those extensions. So it, it, it's a semi-independent pipeline for custom extensions. Okay, um, and then obviously here, when you do add um, additional hardware for the custom instruction, how do you approach the functional uh, verification steps? Oh, yeah. So this is where both Andy's and Imperis come in. Um, from Andy's side, um, the, our methodology ensures that you have the golden model, the software algorithm you start with. Um, the custom instructions are extensions that you create. Um, and we do that first in the simulator because you could go through many iterations of custom extensions. Um, then you verify you, your new simulator with extension against a golden model. Um, and then uh, after you define what instructions you want to implement, after you implement those, now you have two other models to implement uh, behavior or compare the behavior. So the, our process ensures creation of golden model and and a, an updated customized model, and you could do a functional equivalency checking at the CPU level. Thank you, John. Uh, that's pretty much my answer as well. So we come in to be the reference model, the golden model on the system level side, 
if you look at today's systems, especially for example on the AI, it involves hundreds or uh, even I've seen over thousand cores. And we are very capable of uh, modeling that kind of complex large system. Great, thank you. And this is uh, another one. I think you both have something to say and uh, perhaps not, not a surprise here when talking about risk five, there's a, clearly a lot of interest around the potential for open source. But one concern, I suppose, the way this question is written is do custom instructions need to be open source? No, the, um, you could keep your custom extensions private. Um, risk five, as it was being defined, um, made allowance for creating a, a sort of non-open uh, custom extensions. Therefore, um, by license of risk five architecture um, and practice, your custom instructions stay private unless you want to make it public. And there are many ways to make it happen as well. But fundamentally, your custom extensions are your private IP. Same on this side. So with our models, they are under Apache 2.0 license, which is a very permissive license. So the, the custom model, the uh, custom instructions that you add, like John said, you can keep it private or you can public it, um, publicize it. And uh, just as an example, we see that some of our customers use custom instructions to implement their security secret sauce. So obviously that's something you want to keep private. Great, thank you. All right, um, this one is maybe just a terminology question for, for you, John. Um, what's the difference between the term custom instruction and custom extension? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, so custom extension is the large umbrella term in, in that the custom instructions are part of it. But what else you could, you could have is a custom memories and custom ports. Imagine, imagine you create a custom instruction, but that would operate on the registers. However, to accelerate a vector type or streaming type of operation, you may want a memory, dedicated memory for your custom instruction. So we call that uh, and this custom memory. Um, so it could be buffer, it could be a FIFO, you could create that memory space so that you keep your operations running. Lastly, uh, you may want to fill that memory um, or have custom instruction do a physical, uh, manipulate physical signals. So you can also create what's called and this custom port. So they could create a private bus for your um, custom instruction and custom memory. So all these three, three things, instruction, memory, and custom port comprise of custom extensions. Great, I think that's a good good clarification there. Um, okay, uh, Kat, here's, um, here's one for you. Um, you talked about the debugger with custom instruction support. Um, how is that affected when you're running an RTOS or OS? It doesn't affect it at all. So you can use uh, all our tools and uh, it, they stay the same regardless of the custom instructions. Great, we, we like the short answers. We're, we're making good progress here. Um, just a heads up, Jonah, we're getting down to the last uh, couple of questions here. So we'll rapidly be getting over to you for the surprise raffle. Um, Oh, maybe this is a, a, a one for you here, John, is um, if you're going to develop a, a custom instruction, uh, why not just build a completely new processor? Oh, hey, um, the, both are very val valid. The um, custom instructions are point solutions. Think about a uh, sort of machine gun versus, well, that, that gun is a bad example. Think of a sort of a big sledgehammer versus a little um, tiny hammer. Uh, custom instructions accelerate a small portion of an algorithm. Um, maybe you have a compare within a loop. Uh, maybe you have a special multiply or bitwise operations. Um, you can create 5, 10, 20 custom extensions or instructions. But after that, um, the, you start impacting the uh, processors. Um, custom processors, you could create whatever you want. 
with whatever bounds without any limitations. The problem with creating whole instruct a processor, custom processor or accelerator is you have to start from scratch. So it gives you freedom. On the downside, you have to develop your own development methodology, perhaps software compiler tools. Um, lastly, verification methodology. So whole processor is very involved effort. Custom instructions, you could have a custom instruction within less than a day. Very simple to do. Great, um, great, good good answer there. Okay, looks like we're getting down to the last, just one or two questions. So stand by, Jonah. We'll be coming to you in a moment. Um, so since we've got you guys here on the call with, uh, with some experience, um, this is an interesting question. Um, so this is for both uh, Andes and Imperius. Um, what are the most popular custom instructions that you've seen added by customers? Um, well, from the uh, Andes side, the, the, the two most popular categories are bit, bit manipulation. Perhaps you have a uh, uh, streaming data coming in at 32 bits or 64 bits. Um, perhaps you have to change Indianness. Um, so it would be very simple to create a uh, custom bitwise operator, operator to change the Indianness either in the register or a custom memory. Second one is very DSP centric. Um, FFT is a very common algorithm in most communication um, algorithms. And to accelerate FFT, there's an inner butterfly operation of um, multiply. So we have seen many of the butterfly multiply operation custom instructions to accelerate FFT type of algorithms. Interesting. On our side, we see uh, security, as I mentioned, that's very popular. And also, we also see very specific memory access instructions. Um, the other one that we recently have come across is uh, custom instructions for interrupt controllers. Um, the core level interrupt controller, the CPLIC. Great. Uh, thank you very much for sharing uh, your experience there. Um, looks like we're down to the last question here, Jonas. So uh, stand by on your side. Um, so this one looks to a question for you, Kat. Um, bit of a long question here. I'll try and read it clearly. It says, I am building an SOC that needs environmental input, e.g. we need audio to test the audio decoder. How to detect, how to direct the audio to the virtual platform? Ah, oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, yes, yeah, so virtual platform, right. How do you get environmental data inside? So in Paris, virtual platform simulation has a feature called semi-hosting. What it means is that we, our simulator actually leverages the resources of the host machine. So we can, for example, we can get keyboard and mouse input into simulation. So in the situation of the person who asked that question, we have special program to be able to record and replay the audio, audio files for his simulation. And I'll also take the opportunity to point out that uh, we have a wide array of uh, peripherals such as uh, ADC, I2C and DMA and so on. So he can very easily put together the platform. Great, great. That's good use of the, those uh, host machines. So that concludes the, the questions that we've received here on today's webinar. I'd like to thank everybody for attending and particularly our speakers. Thank you very much for your time and uh, contribution on those detailed. Once again, thank you for everybody for attending today's webinar. I hope you found that useful and inf uh, good information. And, and please contact either Hubert or Kat with the email addresses we, we showed earlier. I hope everybody stays safe and I look forward to seeing you in a live event in the not too different distance future. Thank you very much for your time. Good day, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.